Hello everyone and welcome to something new. Now, don't worry, we just want one is still ongoing, but I figured in case you weren't such a fan of the Pro Bowl, uh, everyone seems to be really into uh, the NCAA games, especially uh, NCAA 14 and NCAA revamped. I'd figured I'd introduce some retro college football onto the channel alongside the Cardinals franchise. So in this series, which I'm going to be calling New Cats on the Block, uh, we're going to be taking the NCAA 04 Northwestern Wildcats from the Big Ten Conference and essentially doing the same thing that we're doing with the Cardinals, and we just want one. We are going to improve this program and take it from where it is right now, as you see, coming off a 3-9 record in 2002 at three-star prestige, and we're going to make them perennial contenders in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, and it's it's no small task, absolutely not. Uh, in this game, coming into this game, the Wildcats are currently about four years into their Randy Walker um, tenure, or I guess dynasty, I don't even want to call it a dynasty. Uh, when the Wildcats joined the Big Ten in 1999, uh, Randy Walker takes over and he proceeds over the team uh, through the 2005 season. And the team is pretty disappointing through those years. They do make it to three bowl games and lose all of them. So I'm really just trying to beat out that. If I can get at least like one bowl win, like even if we just go to one bowl win and I win it, I would consider that a success in the first like five years of this. Uh, I think in these games they, they start you off with like a default like three-year contract, but uh, obviously we're going to keep going until we uh, succeed in our mission, and that's making the Northwestern Wildcats football program uh, a successful one. So our coach here is going to be uh, Mr. Rich Poker. Uh, he's been rocking the mullet since he graduated in 1989 um, playing for the Northwestern Wildcats. That's the lore I made up. So we're going to hop in uh, and start our dynasty and see what we're dealing with here uh, with these Wildcats. Okay, so in real life, uh, in the year that this game will be taking place, the uh, the 2003 season, uh, or 03 04, I guess, uh, the Wildcats would actually go 6 and 7. So, uh, with a little bit of uh, new coach magic there, you know, some, some, some user controls, uh, that could possibly turn into uh, some bull eligibility. Um, but bull tie-ins are weird in these older games, you know, it's not so much like, oh, win at least six and you get to go, you know, there's not as many bowl games back then uh, in these days. Uh, it really just comes down to where you place in your conference. So if we can place high enough in our conference, um, we don't even have to be that good, you know what I mean? Especially if the Big Ten is weak this year, which it probably won't be because you know we got the Buckeyes who's gracing the Sports Illustrated cover right here uh, on our main screen. Um, we also have the Michigan Wolverines, of course, who are going to be tough. I think Michigan State actually sucks in this point in time, I think. Um, I play a lot of NCAA 02 and 03, and they're always very bad in those games. So I'm pretty sure they're still pretty bad around this time, too. Uh, I think Penn State typically comes up after about a year or so. Um, but yeah, you know, we have some pretty big juggernauts in this conference uh, that we got to be concerned about. So uh, right off the bat, I guess we'll go into preseason options, and uh, we'll take a look at the custom schedules. I think NCAA 04 is the first year of custom schedules, or actually I think 03 might be. Uh, so we're going to look at our, uh, our, our custom schedules here. Our uh, strength of schedule is at a five-star, and that has to be just purely because we are in the Big Ten. We have uh, such a stacked conference, like I said, so this is going to be pretty difficult. So week one, we don't have a game. Uh, we start our season in Kansas. Uh, week two, um, and then week three, we come home and welcome the Air Force, uh, and then week four, we welcome Miami of Ohio, some action coming uh, to Northwestern, uh, and then we close our at-a-conference play in Duke at week five. Uh, what I really like about the at-a-conference games, what I typically try to look for, is uh, just get a fun variety of teams, you know what I mean, from different conferences, uh, make sure the road games are in fun places, you know, like I probably... Throughout the course of this, we probably won't play, you know, Kansas or Duke really again, you know, unless I choose to play them again. So uh, it'll be fun to go there on the road and just kind of see what those places look like back then in this older game, you know, like play Kansas and Duke and see how they are. Um, and then, of course, we open our conference play uh, week six with the Ohio State Buckeyes. 
who are starting the season off at number one uh, in my experience of playing these games. It doesn't matter how old or how new they are. Uh, the top-ranked teams always get a little just weird <laughs> about halfway through the season. You know, the teams that are number one. It's not like today where, you know, they'll rank Alabama number one at the beginning of the season. That's probably where they'll finish or they'll finish second or third. You know, Ohio State's number one now, and they might finish the season at, like, 14. So I wouldn't expect them to stay at number one or any of these ranked teams that you see to stay where they're at. Um, but... Uh, but that's what the lay of the land is right now at the beginning of the year as we look at our schedule here in the preseason. We have Ohio State at week six uh, in the big house. Um, then the following week, we uh, have Minnesota at home. Then we head to Indiana and take on the Hoosiers uh, week eight. Um, and then we skip to week 10 where we're taking on number 25th ranked Wisconsin. Uh, following, that, and, uh, following that up the following week in Purdue, ranked 23rd. And then we come home again and welcome Penn State, uh, the Michigan Wolverines, who are ranked 10th, and then we finish our year off uh, in Champaign, taking on the Fighting Illini. So, pretty stacked schedule. Uh, in full disclosure, I am a Big Ten college football fan. I'm a Buckeye fan, so uh, definitely persuaded my choice in picking a school. I wanted to pick a smaller school in a conference that I watched so much of already, and I thought North Northwestern was a, was a solid choice. So I'm really excited uh, for this series to get into uh, our conference play because those games should be so much fun. So that's I'm going to leave uh, the schedule the way it is. Typically in the first year, I always do. Now maybe in the following years, I might change it a bit if maybe I want us to be a little bit easier, or maybe a little bit more difficult to test how our team is or give us maybe an easier path uh, to a bowl game or just a better record. Uh, but for year one, I like to leave it how it is. If this is what the team was playing with back in 2003, 2004, then we're going to leave it like that way and we'll see how we fare. <laughs> uh, and then we'll head to redshirt. I typically don't redshirt players in this first year uh, because the whole point of this is to upgrade the team over the course of the first couple of years, you know, recruit in uh, better talent than what's already here. So, you know, there's not really a whole lot of players that are worth redshirting. You know, like the 64 overall sophomore quarterback, uh, we already have a, a sophomore redshirted quarterback at an 83. So, like, you know, I, I probably plan to recruit a better quarterback, so why would I want to hold on to this guy? You know what I mean? So, uh, but it's interesting here. This is a good way for me to kind of look at the roster overall and just see what's here. Uh, so we have an 83 overall quarterback, which is nice, a 90 overall running back, um, and also, I guess I'll just I'll, I'll point out the elephant in the room here. This is, I think, the last game before you can auto-generate names for every team in the game. So for the first probably three to four seasons, you're going to be seeing a lot of the position and number players. I'm going to have to find a way <laughs> when it comes time to record gameplay uh, how to navigate around that. I'll probably just call them out by their number anyway. Just, you know, have to live with it. Um it would be too much to go through all the rosters, you know, or at least all the rosters that I'm going to play and make up names or pick their actual names. Uh, if there's a actual big name player that you recognize throughout any of the teams that we do play, like obviously when we play Ohio State, there's probably going to be a few uh, big name dudes that um, even I remember uh, that I might be able to call out. So, you know, it, it should be fun, I guess, just looking at them like, oh, who's running back number 18? And, you know, it's actually like one of the greatest running backs of all time. Uh, but uh, anyway, glossing over that, uh, we actually have some good depth at the running back position, which I, I think is cool. Um, probably not going to get past the senior, though, at 90 overall. I, I, I look forward to using him. Uh, we only have one fullback, and he's not very good. <laughs> uh, receiving core also drops off pretty quick. Um we only have one 80 overall wide receiver. Well, I mean, our running game is, is looks pretty solid, uh, so I, I'm okay, I guess, not having that many great receivers or at least having only one option. That I'm not too worried about that. Uh, we really don't have a solid option at tight end. That kind of sucks. Uh, looking at our offensive line, our tackle situation's not great either. We really don't have any good tackles. It's like the Cardinals franchise all over again. Um, looking at our guards, we only have three. Uh, our left guard is at 81 overall, which is solid. Um, and we only have one right guard. Is that a 73? So, so far, the offensive line is really concerning me. Oh, and it gets worse with the center position. Ooh, okay. Uh, this is difficult because we don't have enough depth in our receiving core to rely on the passing game, really. But we have all the depth in the world 
with our running backs, but we have no line to back that up. So it's going to be tough to get anything done uh, all season long, I guess, with an offensive line as bad as this. So moving to the defensive side of the ball, uh, we have a really solid right end uh, who's sitting at an 86. He's only a sophomore, so he's going to get better, uh, which is good. Um, but it falls off sharp after that. Man, this team has zero depth. Zero depth. Oh, man, look at these tackles. Oh, my. I mean, they're a three-star prestige, so you can do something with that. You know, with the twos and the ones in this game, it, it gets difficult sometimes to do anything with that. Um, but, uh, you know, with the threes, you know, even if you perform around, like, 500, you can still get enough points and stuff to recruit good guys to come to your school. So we need to utilize that because we do not have a lot here. <laughs> Uh, oh, straight 60s uh, in the 159 here with our tackle is not good. Head to our linebacker court of the same situation. We got one solid one. He's a sophomore, so, you know, I, I like these younger uh, guys here who are kind of representing the better aspects of the team. But look at how it drops off, man. These are juniors. At least that's a freshman at a 54, but still, he's probably not going to see any time <laughs> through the course of this dynasty mode. Um, moving to our middle linebacker, we have a solid senior at 88. Oh, man. Oh, these are both seniors. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, I, oof. Okay. At least our cornerbacks, we have a one and two. Not great one and two, but we have a one and two. They're at least consistent with each other, and they're both young. So that's fine by me. Um, I, I guess I'll take that considering how terrible the O-line is, the D-line is, the linebacker core is. Oh, man. Uh, we have a senior free safety here at 73. Both of our free safeties are uh, seniors, and neither of them are very good. So it looks like the defense is really where this team is lacking. We have a lot of uh, upperclassmen here, like juniors and seniors, who just are not high overall. So they're all going to leave after this year. So we have to do as much damage as we can in year one to not only make an impression on incoming prospects, um, but just maximize whatever skill we do have on this team. Because there's not much, and I can already see that this team getting is probably going to get considerably worse after year one. Um, we have a freshman kicker and a junior punter, so if that matters to you, if you're into the kickers and punters, if you want to do it for the brand. So, again, kind of looking over the team, we got an okay quarterback. We have a good situation at running back. I'm not worried. I mean, this could carry us for the next few years, uh, considering, you know, we have younger backup running backs. Um, don't have a good fullback. It's whatever. Uh, we definitely need depth at the receiving position. Our best receiver is a senior, so, yeah, we got to bolster this, like, quick if we can. Uh, a bad tight end situation, bad O-line, uh, bad D-line, uh, but at least our right end, who is our best, probably our best defensive player, period, uh, is a sophomore, so we'll have him for a little bit. Our defensive tackle situation is not good either. Uh, we, we have a, a young uh, right outside linebacker who probably is not going to get much better over time. Uh, progression in these games is a lot more generous than it is in Madden, in my opinion, because the progression in this game is, like, like scheduled almost. You know, like, in Madden, your players only progress if you play well enough with them. And preseason kind of acts as, like, the training aspect of that game where they do increase. But unless you, like, play preseason or anything, then the growth is going to be uh, pretty, pretty moderate to non-existent. But in this game... Uh, when you go through, like, the training aspect of your offseason, like, that literally is supposed to boost every single player on your team. Like, it doesn't matter how uh, how young or old they are. Like, it's supposed to boost every single person on the team. So, with someone like this linebacker who's a sophomore uh, at 71, um, you know, over the course of the next year or two that he plays here, he will probably get close to an 80, but that's probably his peak. So... Middle linebacker situation is not good because those guys are both seniors. Uh, and then, yeah, the young cornerbacks. So, yeah, that's the lay of the land. We don't have a great team. It's giving us a C overall, if you can see it up by the uh, floating helmet. Uh, our overall grade is a C. So I really don't feel like this is an average team. I feel like this is a below average team. We have a couple weapons and, like, very small minuscule parts in the team. You know, like our running back and, uh, you know, our, our linebacker and right end. But... Otherwise, this team is very scant on talent, and we don't have a whole lot. So, and you can see the breakdown of our team here as, as by class. 
Um, you know, we got 10 seniors, and I'm guessing a majority of those seniors are all playing impact positions. So, um, yeah, like I said, probably not going to redshirt anybody. We're just going to deal with it. Um, that's going to be uh, it for the preseason situation here. So, uh, I guess just for the fun of it, uh, we'll look at the preseason polls. You know, if, if you're interested in that, we'll see how the uh, the NCAA is stacking up before we get into playing um, our season. Uh, Ohio State comes in at 1, uh, Oklahoma at 2, Miami at 3, Texas at 4, Kansas State at 5. Kansas State, remember, our, our, our first game <laughs> of the season, Kansas State. Uh, is it Kansas State or is it Kansas? I thought it was Kansas State. Uh, no, it's Kansas. Thank goodness. Okay, I thought we had to play Kansas State for a second, uh, and I and I got a little scared. But uh, man, Sports Illustrated is all about the Buckeyes this season. It's crazy. We'll see how long uh, that lasts. Um, we're gonna check a conference outlook too. I want to see what that's all about. Uh, but the yeah, the top five is pretty standard. These are all the pretty basic uh, teams that are top five pretty much every year from any game in this era. Auburn's number six. Uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, I think this is back when they had Michael Vick. Or I think Vick's gone by this point because it's NCAA 04, but um, it might be his brother by this point. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Georgia at 8. USC at 9. You know, back when USC was a top 10 team. Uh, NC State at 11. Uh, Pitt at 12. I really just like going through these and just seeing, you know, the weird outlying teams like Maryland at 15. <laughs> uh, Virginia at 18. Uh, Notre Dame down at 20. Arizona State at 21. There's your Alabama Crimson Tide. If you're a Crimson Tide fan, I'm sorry, but you're starting the year off at 22. Uh, I'm sure you forgot what that feels like. Uh, yeah, Purdue at 23. Texas A&M at 24. And then the uh, Badgers at 25. So we got a few Big Ten teams. I don't know how many Big Ten teams are in there. I'll, uh, probably will show me the conference outlook. I think we have, like, what, five? Four or five? Um, so let's look here at the Big Ten. So... I'm guessing that this is how, is this is the projection of how our conference is going to play out. Okay, so is it saying, all right, so it says that Ohio State's, I guess, projected to win? Or is this just ranking us here as far as, like, national rank goes? Because uh, Penn State, does it say where their national rank is? Am I just not seeing it? Uh, and the media says they're 24. Uh, but, yeah, it's not going to tell me yet. Um, so, yeah, I guess this is just like the projection, I guess, from best to worst. So we're projected to be down here in the cellar with uh, the uh, Hoosiers in Indiana and the Spartans. Like I said, Spartans are pretty bad around this time. So we're back down here around them. I don't know if this is going to be accurate. I would imagine we'll play a little bit better. Like I said, we got to do the most with what we have early because... With all the seniors we have leaving and stuff, especially with how big of a role they are on the roster, uh, it's probably not going to be um, better for us in year two. You know, there's only so much we can do with recruiting in one year. So, uh, and we're going to move forward ahead now to this Kansas game and skip through that first week. All right, and now that we've advanced fast, our first bye week uh, here is the matchup. Uh, you can see. Uh, we are pretty evenly matched with Kansas. Um, they have the edge in special teams. Ooh, I'm very scared. Uh, but their national rank is a little bit worse. Uh, Kansas is definitely uh, coming as the underdog here. But we are in Kansas playing this game. It is, is it a primetime game? 8 o'clock. So uh, hopefully you'll come back for uh, the first game of this new series, New Cats on the Block. We are taking the Northwestern Wildcats, and we are going to make them into something. I'm not promising natty after natty, but I'm promising that this will be a program you can write home about to your moms, to your dads, to anybody, because we're going to have some fun here. Uh, and so if you don't like the NFL pro content, uh, then here's some collegiate content. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, and uh, hopefully you'll be back to watch us take on uh, Kansas. Kansas.